Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Thursday, the 23rd. I'm Mark. That's Steph. Hi, Hi. Steph. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a great week so far. Great news for our San Antonio Symphony. Yes, especially during this time, the pandemic. So the San Antonio Symphony receives a $17,500 grant from the National Endowment for the Arts. Yeah, to continue their virtual first of its kind program that incorporates Shakespeare into the classroom. So the grant for the symphony will allow organizers and performers to continue performances in a virtual format due to the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the grant documentation, the symphony will expand its literacy project that introduces elementary school age children to William Shakespeare. Symphony said in a statement that it's planning its fourth year of the program, which uses the show as a vehicle for teaching students writing and language skills so they can become master communicators and scholars of tomorrow and according to symphony the program has been translated into spanish and will be presented in a spanish english bilingual format and the national endowment speaking out of the arts chairman mary ann carter said the award symbolizes the power of art in the face of a national health crisis so there's a lot of positives here of course for the san antonio symphony and for the children in the classrooms as well getting to see this i'm sure a lot of them are missing programs and you know extracurricular activities so this is one way for children to see that and also one way for you know the arts to to have some funding. Oh, as you said, it's a win-win situation for the kids and, and for our, our amazing uh, symphony. For more information on this story, of course, you can check it out anytime on our website at ksat.com. Yeah, a lot of our artists being hit hard. I had talked to a piano player a couple of months ago, and he was asking his friends, if you have like a party, you know, a virtual party, he was like, go ahead and zoom me, zoom me in so I can play the piano while you have dinner. Oh, that's nice. Yes, and so um, we're seeing a lot of a lot of different ways for us to continue on with the arts. Let's take a look at your GMSA rundown. Coronavirus deaths are on the rise in 28 states. There is some good news. The percentage of positive test results is leveling off or decreasing in 21 states. Parents are planning to send their kids to classrooms this fall. And that's why my husband and I decided to write our wills. It's not only Texas, a law firm in Pennsylvania says they've seen a rise in teachers preparing wills as schools get ready to reopen. <laughs> Catholic schools are prepared for both on and off campus learning. Mayor Ron Nierberg would prefer if religious schools followed the recommendations from medical professionals. The Consul General of Houston does not dispute burning documents, but he also stopped short of disputing accusations of economic espionage. I think if we want to make accusations of us, give us some evidence. People gathered in front of the federal courthouse to protest President Donald Trump placing federal agents in the city to stop those protesting. Now, Mayor Ted Wheeler joined demonstrators overnight where he was tear gassed. Kim Kardashian West is now speaking out about her husband's bipolar diagnosis. Kim writing in part, people who are unaware or far removed from this experience can be judgmental and not understand that the individual themselves have to engage in the process of getting help. It's finally time to play ball. The season starts tonight with the Nationals hosting the Yankees and the Dodgers facing the Giants. No fans will be in the stands. They'll be replaced by fake crowd noise. Spurs are scheduled to play their first game in the NBA bubble at Disney World in Orlando today. They're playing the league best Milwaukee Bucks. The league is easing the players back into full-time play, so today's game will be shorter. Beer shortage. Distributors say their supplies are lacking these days. One reason is because more people are drinking at home. Alice Trebek has chosen the golden girl he believes could take over Jeopardy. A longtime game show host suggested that Betty White be his successor, but he's not planning on leaving Jeopardy anytime soon. Wouldn't Betty. that be cool? She'd be fun. <laughs> At least a guest appearance, right? Yes, I think so. I think she'd do a great job, actually. <laughs> you know what? And also pretty cool about today. Later on today, we're going to be channel surfing, and we're going to see our Spurs on, and that live bug is going to be in the corner. They're back. I know. Go Spurs, go. So excited about that. Even though it's just a scrimmage, but we'll take what we can get right That's now. That's okay. Yep. We're, we're building up. Outside with live cam, morning clouds giving way to some afternoon sunshine, but uh, Justin joins us now and all eyes still on the Gulf of Mexico. Indeed, we do have tropical depression to braid out there. It, we, we have it to name now, so it's a depression. We may eventually get Tropical Storm Hannah, but the message remains the same. It, it's rainfall that we're concerned with. Uh, with the system and right now it looks like maybe the heaviest of the rain may stay south of San Antonio. 
It's subject to change, but that's where we stand right now. Let's take a look at the Gulf of Mexico. We'll show you that we're starting to get some of that deep thunderstorm activity again. There is a center here, an area of low pressure, and uh, this will continue to move off to the west and northwest. Let's take a look at the latest track. And this is uh, going into Saturday afternoon. Looks like we could be talking about landfall there uh, anywhere in that cone. So anywhere south of Corpus all the way up uh, towards the Houston area. There's still a wide swath here where we could see impacts. Winds right now are at 30 miles per hour, but they are expected to increase uh, maybe up to 45 miles per hour. And then eventually this storm moves inland and south of San Antonio. At least that's the way it looks right now. It still will throw some tropical moisture in our direction, and I still think we have some rain chances over the weekend. Uh, 77 Bernie stage right now, 82 Boulevard, 83 New Braunfels, 80 at Stenson. It's a warm, humid morning. And temperatures today up around 99. We got up to 100 yesterday. We're going to be right back there again today. Outside chance of a stray shower storm can't be ruled out. Uh, we're going to have much more on the tropics, and what you can expect this weekend coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. New this morning at 9, San Antonio police are looking for a driver who they say crashed a stolen truck twice at two different spots on the west side. Police tell us the suspect first crashed into a car near Benress and Bartmer around 7.30 this morning. We're told the driver kept going, then crashed into a concrete wall outside a home two blocks away at Benress and Rita before running away. Officers say no one was hurt in either incident. And top stories we are following today. A portion of Loop 1604 on the far west side remains closed this morning after police say a driver crashed his 18-wheeler. It happened around 1 this morning on Shanefield Road. Here's a look at the site on Transguide. That's actually 1604 and Bandera on the other side of the loop where construction is continuing in that area. But back to the situation at 1604 and Shanefield. Crews are still at the scene trying to clean up the mess, and they tell us they expect it to be out there for at least a few more hours. This is what the scene looked like earlier this morning. Police tell us the driver lost control of the truck after someone caught him, uh, cut him off. The truck caught fire, but the man was able to escape and make his way to the access road. Officers tell us he suffered third degree burns and was airlifted to University Hospital with life threatening injuries. Three people are behind bars this morning after the Bear County Sheriff's Office shut down an illegal gambling operation on in South San Antonio last night. And right now we're still waiting to learn their names. The gambling bust happened at a home in the 300 block of Mayfield Boulevard. That's between South Florida Street and Pleasanton Road. Sheriff Javier Salazar says deputies discovered 15 eight liner machines. They also seized $4,000 in cash, a half ounce of a methamphetamine and a stolen car. Salazar says more arrests and federal charges are expected in this case. 50 additional contact tracers and 200 case investigators are coming to San Antonio as the city continues to see a spike in COVID-19 cases. Some positive news, though. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says we currently are seeing a small decline in hospitalizations. More than 1,600 cases and nine new deaths were reported yesterday, though. 12% of staffed beds are currently available. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says a new city model shows a potential plateau in hospitalizations in the next two weeks. City officials say they remain cautiously optimistic because the number of virus infections and hospitalizations can inflate quickly. Desperate need to fight the pandemic led to businesses such as distilleries to put a pause in regular production to make hand sanitizer. This morning's Tito's Vodka is giving away thousands of hand sanitizer bottles to the San Antonio community. Our Alicia Barrera is live from the AT&T Center with more on how to pick up hand sanitizer. Good morning. Good morning. So when this pandemic be began back in March, Tito's Vodka really started focusing their efforts in helping essential workers. But recently they've been helping extending that help to the community. So if you're coming here, what you need to know, you're going to be entering through Gate D, Lot 4. That's off of AT&T Center Parkway. There, there will be some staff from Tito's as well as Spurs Gift to direct you. And they're giving out more than 20,000 bottles. What this looks like, this is the presentation. You'll receive two bags in your car and they actually come with these little pumps inside that you can just obviously twist this cap off and then put that there. So two bags you'll receive. So in total, you're gonna be getting six. But here's other things that you do need to know before you head here to keep in mind. Everyone must be 18 and up. If you're, um, right now it's kind of slow here, 
but you can see that this is that they're wearing their protective gear, gloves, masks, keeping that social distance. All passengers must wear their face masks if they want to receive these hand sanitizer bottles. You're asked to stay in your vehicle at all times and then plop your trunk or unlock your doors. That way they can either put it again in your trunk or in your back seat. And again, there is a limit of six hand sanitizers per vehicle. So again, this is how it's working here at AT&T Center Park at AT&T Center. Started at 9 a.m., so just a few minutes ago. They're already busy, but you have until 2 p.m. today. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. It looks like a lot of people got the message yesterday and they're there this morning already. Starting to file in. Mm -hmm. 908 right now, 81 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A 79-year-old Arizona man got lost trying to go visit his son. How a couple drove more than 1,600 miles to help him. Texas Tribune reports that undocumented tenants have the same rights as anyone when it comes to evictions. Behind on the rent, many are not exercising those rights. We'll tell you why in our Tribune Thursday report. And heart-stopping video out of France showing children jumping out of a building to escape a massive fire. David Sears has details after the break in your morning headlines. And the Dow is down about 60 points at 26,947. Right now it's 12 minutes past the hour in your morning headlines. The latest on another possible stimulus package. And a bear could be moving into a neighborhood. Our David Sears is here to tell us about that. Good morning. I'm beginning to think there's an organization of bears and they sit around and watch themselves on TV and go, hey, if we get on, do this and do this, we can get on TV. <laughs> They've got really good lobbyists, let's just say that. And that dude in San Antonio shows all the time. <laughs> I know, right? And that dude is you. So, and yeah, we're going to show a bear. Just okay. First. Folks around the country who are trying to keep their heads above water during this COVID-19 pandemic are a step closer to getting some relief. Last night, Republican senators in the White House have reached a deal on key provisions of a fourth stimulus package. First off, it is a trillion dollar plan. There's $105 billion to help kids get back to school. And by the way, the schools who do not open right away for in-person learning will not be penalized. There is money for Corona's testing. There is another round of PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program. The plan is coming as we approach the end of the $600 a month unemployment benefit. The White House talking about a short term extension. The House Democrats already passed a $3 trillion package. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell should be unveiling more key features sometime today. Also today, 1.4 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits. That's up from last week's 1.3 million. That news just out a few minutes ago, all told somewhere between 25 and 32 million Americans are on unemployment. All right, this is some incredible video. This is an apartment building on fire in France. And look right there, that's a child hanging out the window. His mom's got him and watch. Yeah, she just lets him go right into the arms of those folks waiting for him. The only way they could get that child out of that burning building, then it happens again, a second child just hanging out of the window by a parent. And then that parent drops that child to safety. The two boys taken to the hospital along with 17 other residents of the building. They were treated for inhaling smoke. No word on the boys' condition or what happened to the folks inside that apartment. Four people who were actually out there catching those boys also taken to the hospital to be checked out. All right, and there's another scary story. If you are one of those who likes to sit outside and eat near the street, yeah, this is a pickup crash in somebody's dinner plans. This is in Brooklyn. A truck plowing right into the diners. Truck hit three people while they were eating. The good news is they were not seriously hurt. The driver tried to get away, but he was flagged down. The 20 something was driving without a license. By the way, those restaurants in New York are supposed to have planters or some big concrete buffers or something to protect the diners from all that traffic. All right, across the country to Portland, we showed you just a minute ago another night of violence. They're approaching 55 nights of violence in the Rose City. No sign of it slowing down. Either businesses are boarded up or burning. In June, it was estimated that downtown businesses have lost $23 million. Now, with the continued destruction every night, it's been harder to gauge the dollar amount of damage. Last night, the mayor of Portland, Ted Wheeler, joined the protesters. There were moments when he was booed and even pepper sprayed. President Trump says he is ready to assist law enforcement. Right now, the federal government is having to protect their own federal facilities in Portland from being destroyed and federal agents from being injured. And finally, it wouldn't be a week without a bear story. And yep, we've got one. There he is, just kind of hanging out. Ooh, what's going on in there? <laughs> 
This is taking place in California near Monterey. The bear has sort of become a regular in the neighborhood. He just kind of wanders in and he wanders around, goes where he wants, usually hunting for food, of course. He apparently likes fruit. The bear is likely a young male and he's looking for a new home. At first, the neighbors were a little startled. I have a window that overlooks my backyard and I had walked into my kitchen and there was the bear in my backyard. It is a little startling to see a bear through your window, but better than in the house. It appears the bear wandered down from a national forest behind the housing area. The California Fish and Wildlife are telling neighbors to stay away from the bear. Do not approach it. That way they will hopefully not have to tranquilize it and it'll kind of wander back to the woods on its Aww. own. We always, we always kind of say we've moved in the, the bears mm -hmm. coming into our neighborhood. I think we've moved into the bears neighborhood. Well, that's kind of their true. turf first, right? Yeah. So it's like, you know, we should be like maybe wandering in their backyard over their fence. Going Dave, to David, I have a question for you. Some of us are old enough to remember Yogi Bear. Did you huh? just sort of do a Yogi Bear imitation before <laughs> that sound bite? I believe he did. Hey, boo boo. That was it. <laughs> yes, it that is. was it. Not bad. Thanks for some, clarifying. Some people will have to Google that. Yeah, they'll have to figure that out. All right. <laughs> Not us here, though. No, we've got We got you. We got you covered. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> He's acting all embarrassed now. No, no. He did a great job. Yes, it was great. <laughs> Night 17, 81 degrees. And uh, right now we're going to bring Justin back in. Hi, yeah. Justin. Hey there. And I, by the way, I remember Yogi Bear. Well, there you go. Great all of us too. in the studio then. Yeah, Question is, the do there, does everybody remember Boo Boo? Oh, wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. The trusty sidekick. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Uh, okay, so the, the tropics, the big topic of conversation now, guys. We've been watching Tropical Depression number eight out there in the Gulf of Mexico. I want to show you this. This is the Hurricane Hunters. They flew into this thing yesterday, and you can follow the plane along there. Uh, winds were terribly strong, but they found enough evidence there to name this a tropical depression. You see they kind of fly loops around what they believe is the center, and then they pass that data along. And this flight is very important. That data goes into these computer models that help us better predict where this system will go. But it found peak uh, flight level winds around 29 miles per hour. Uh, let's take a look at the satellite picture as it stands right now. And you can see that we're starting to get some better thunderstorm development around the center. So that tells me that uh, there will be some slow development here, some intensification possibly, but it'll be slow as it moves to the west, northwest towards Texas. And uh, here's the latest track as the hurricane center sees it. And by 1 p.m. Saturday, they're thinking that we could have a tropical storm. Winds 45 miles per hour nearing the Texas coast. But keep in mind, Anywhere in this fan, you could see uh, this path, you could see effects from this uh, tropical system. So there's still some uncertainty here, and it's a, it's a big area that we're still watching. And then uh, it will move uh, inland and potentially bring us some rain here over the weekend. At least that's the hope. The good news is that this system should stay fairly weak, tropical storm, and we're hoping that it still throws some tropical moisture in our direction because, boy, uh, do we need the rain? Uh, again, it is in the forecast. So let's take a look at uh, one of our computer models, and this is just one. It does show that the showers will start to approach the Texas coast by Friday. It's probably not until Saturday afternoon that we start to see some real shower and thunderstorm activity associated with this, and this could continue over Saturday night into Sunday potentially with some of the heaviest rain down to our south, maybe around Corpus and some of our southern counties as well. And when we're talking rainfall totals right now, that's where we see some potentially some of the heavier totals estimating maybe two to three inches here around San Antonio, although I think they could be a little generous. We'll see. Uh, would, we would certainly take those numbers if that does indeed uh, turn out that way, because you look at the drought monitor, and it really is starting to get worse. Uh, we're starting to see extreme drought out west. And so the drought is uh, definitely setting in. And as you know, uh, the lawn's turning brown here with uh, lack of rainfall and now with water restrictions in place. 81 degrees at the airport, 74 the dew point east southeasterly winds at about 6. We've got some of that morning cloud cover out there. It is extremely humid, 82 at Randolph, 82 Seguin, 83 right now in New Braunfels. You have 82 Carrizo Springs, 83 Del Rio, 86 in Victoria, dew points in the 70s. And just like yesterday, we're going to be right up around that 100 degree mark. Heat index will jump up to 103 potentially here in San Antonio. And so the heat index is going to be a problem again today and tomorrow. We're not losing the heat next couple of days. Uh, temperatures again, 99. There is a 10% chance of a shower or storm today, although anything we see is going to be few and far between. 20% uh, chance coming up tomorrow, mainly along the coast. And then we'll call for some afternoon scattered showers and storms Saturday, depending on the path of this 
uh, system and then a 60% chance on Sunday too. some good downpours there. There could be some pockets of heavier rain, uh, especially south of San Antonio, and then we'll still get some rain chances next week too with that tropical moisture hanging around guys. We'll be watching out for that, but in the meantime, yes, our lawns have been crunchy. Yes, so they have. We look forward to the rain. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. 921, 81 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, a couple in Illinois going above and beyond to help an elderly man visit his son. The incredible act of kindness that will warm your heart. That's next. A 79-year-old Arizona man's cross-country trip is going viral on social media. And as Michelle Beck with WMTV in Madison, Wisconsin reports, the man got lost but eventually made it home thanks to some kind strangers he met along the way. Tuesday night, Dennis Malen sits side by side with his son. Well, I drove all this way to see my son. I haven't seen him in 18 years. But how he got here requires some explanation. The route from his home in Heber Overgard, Arizona, to his son's home in Fremont, Wisconsin, is just over 1,600 miles. Dennis says he put in an extra 200 miles on his route because he kept getting lost. He got lost again on day three of his drive, but this time he met a couple at a gas station right here in Illinois. Locals Elton Hood and Tracy Eckhart wrote down some directions and their phone number and sent him on his way. If, if that was my mom, I would be a wreck. You know, I would want somebody to help her. Within 15 minutes, they got a call from Dennis. And he just looked at me and he said, you ready to go to Wisconsin? Just like that, the couple embarked on a three hour trip to drop Dennis off, meeting his son in Madison. Neither one of us could bear the thought of, you know, if we saw a missing persons alert or if something bad happened to him, you know, that we at one point had the potential to help turn this around and didn't do it. That was just not going to work for either of us. TikTok users have watched this story more than 3.7 million times and counting. After talking to uh, Mr. Dennis's family on a couple of occasions this afternoon, it became apparent that there are some circumstances that are not going to allow them to be able to escort Dennis back to Arizona using his own vehicle. We started this adventure and I, it's just the right thing to do to finish it with um, taking him back home. All I can say is God bless you. My, these people, God, when they pass away, raise them immediately up to heaven. <laughs> And that was WMTV's Michelle Beck reporting from Wisconsin. So after seeing the story, two people offered to buy Dennis a plane ticket home and he'll be flying back on Saturday. What an awesome couple for them to do that. It's so scary to be lost. So I'm glad that they stepped in. A very happy ending right mm -hmm. now. It's 926, 81 degrees. And coming up on GMSA at 9, it seems like coffee is ingrained in our culture. But how and when did it become so trendy? RJ Marcus joins us after the break to break down this latest episode of it, Case It Explains. It's becoming a more common phenomenon here about a rising number of self evictions amid undocumented immigrants here in Texas. That is next in our Tribune Thursday report. Self eviction now a notable trend among Texas's undocumented immigrants, but what about their rights as tenants? And undocumented immigrants could play a role in how congressional boundaries are redrawn, especially here in the Lone Star State. Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune joins us for our Tribune Thursday report. Good morning, Alana. Good morning. Let's start off with undocumented immigrants now behind on their rent. They are self evicting across Texas. The Tribune writes that an undocumented tenant has the same rights as anyone else during the eviction process. What are those rights and why aren't undocumented immigrants exercising these rights? Well, uh, the short answer to the second part of that is a fear. You know, they don't want to go on the radar or, or, you know, be on the radar for immigration officials to realize that they're in this country uh, without papers, without documentation. And so they're not going to court to plead, you know, their hardship cases uh, or, or, you know, their situations because Immigration and Customs Enforcement agents have access to the courthouses. And there have been cases in the past where, uh, you know, non-immigration related cases, uh, the immigrants have been arrested uh, by ICE agents. So they don't want to chance that. They don't want to even kind of plead to their their landlords because again they're afraid that they'll be flagged uh you know and deported and so um you know couple that with the fact that some eviction moratoriums are expiring the, those that were put in place 
uh, back in March, and uh, the fact that many undocumented immigrants don't qualify for the help from the federal government, from unemployment, uh, that many Texans otherwise, uh, you know, have benefited from. This week, President Trump directed the administration to exclude undocumented immigrants when congressional seats are divvied up next year. This all stands, the, stands up to the legal challenges. The memo signed Tuesday by the president could cost Texas some seats in Congress. But you say it's not that simple, Alana. Oh, it's never that simple when, you know, uh, there's a like, all, you know, almost all but certain uh, legal challenges uh, coming with this that will stretch on for a long time. Uh, you know, questions on whether the president has unilateral, um, you know, authority to to deem this, you know, not count the sizable portion of the population. Here in Texas, recent estimates show uh, that number is around 1.8 million. Um, and with the districts, you know, split up, uh, even in, in population, uh, not counting this part of the population, you know, it, it's just uh, sizable and it's not really clear. You know, we're expected to see population growth as a whole and uh, many of those will be undocumented. Uh, so it's not really clear how many seats we gain or lose as a result of this. Um, and, and there's no good data set for the government to look at. You remember Trump tried to add a citizenship question to the 2020 census. The U.S. Supreme Court shut that down. Last year, the state tried to look at its voter rolls based on the driver's license data. That was incredibly flawed because many naturalized citizens were on that list. So uh, no good data set, long legal challenges. So uh, the memo signed to Tuesday, um, you know, has a long road ahead before it becomes reality. And Alana, a lot of people are worried about this. C coronavirus has spread to the state budget. Now that the first official estimate of the coronavirus's effect on the Texas economy is out, news that the state will have $11.6 billion less to spend. How do lawmakers begin figuring out what to cut and what to keep? Uh, well, it's a, it's a complicated situation because there are still many unknowns which are cited in the uh, comptroller's estimate that came out this week. Uh, you know, we don't know how long the pandemic uh, will last as far as when it'll be under control, when businesses will be, you know, open and running as they were before March, uh, when oil and gas will resume. So still many unknowns. They'll have some more answers come January, but we don't know exactly who's going to be there in January because many of the lawmakers looking at the budget now are up for re-election in November. Um, education and health care are the largest um, line items in the budget. And just last session, uh, the state said it would up its share of spending on schools. So to only cut that this session, not a good option. Uh, and then health care, cutting those agencies that are at the forefront trying to address the pandemic isn't a popular option either. So they're in a tough spot, to say the least. And again, they don't know exactly who will be back come January to tackle this. All right. To Alana Frocha from the Texas Tribune. More on texastribune.org. Have a great rest of the week, Alana. Thank you. Thank you. And taking a look outside with live cam, it is 81 degrees. It's heating up. I guess a little bit of heat before the rain we're going to get. Yeah, a lot of heat. Actually, we got up to 100 yesterday. We'll probably be right back there again today and tomorrow. So the big hope is for some rain over the weekend and hopefully some cooler temperatures. It's all going to hinge on what happens with our tropical depression, which right now is out in the Gulf of Mexico. Tropical depression number eight still showing some signs of maybe some slow intensification here. You see some of the deeper reds there that indicates some cooler cloud tops and some thunderstorm activity, perhaps over our center here as it slowly works out to the west northwest. Latest track from the Hurricane Center takes it towards the Texas coast, and this will be probably Saturday afternoon. Winds could go as high as 45 miles per hour. At least that's the forecast right now. Still a big swath there. Still some unknowns as to exactly where this will track, but we still believe that it will bring some tropical moisture into South Texas over the weekend. We're already seeing a few showers out there today. This is not associated with the tropical depression, but uh, enough moisture out there to get a few showers going around Beeville down towards Corpus, and we certainly can't rule out a chance for an isolated shower or storm today. Temperatures in the 80s right now. It's awful humid. We've got a little bit of cloud cover. Look for partly cloudy skies today up to 99, but it will feel like 103, 104 a little bit later this afternoon. Uh, we'll get another update for you on this uh, tropical weather coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, sir. And right now we're looking at 1604 and broad and those westbound lanes are remaining closed due to that big rig cleanup from that accident early, early this morning towards Shanefield Road. Uh, the access road is flowing. SAPD is telling us they are hoping to have this wrapped up before noon. 
And it used to be just a morning beverage or the drink you needed to start your day. But now it seems coffee is ingrained in our culture with many coffee houses becoming social spots. And this week's KSAT Explains would take a deep dive into coffee culture here in San Antonio. RJ Marquez joined us live from home to talk more about this episode. First things first, RJ, are you a coffee drinker? I am, Mark. <laughs> yeah, and it's weird because... I actually became more of a coffee drinker when I started working more regular hours. I used to have this uh, overnight shift when I first started in this business, and I didn't drink as much coffee, but now, as you can see, I definitely kind of uh, needed to kind of fuel my day or get me going. So, yeah, guys, this was something that we definitely wanted to explore, you know, how this has become such a big business in San Antonio. And we also want to explore all the different angles of coffee as well, the history of it, its origins. Uh, we found out it goes back to ninth century Ethiopia. There's coffee ceremonies around the world, of course, how it's made and the impact that it has had locally here in the Alamo City and how a lot of these people that have opened coffee shops here in our area have given up their previous lives to do this, to sort of follow this dream, including um, one of our former colleagues, Charles Gonzalez, you remember him, he gave up the news desk for the coffee counter, so to say. And um, we just learned a lot of different things from a lot of different people. So I think people are really gonna enjoy this, especially the people that really enjoy a good cup of coffee. All right, RJ. Well, we also heard from a San Antonio Spurs player who has been a big influence in the local coffee scene. Tell us about that. Yeah, of course, Patty Mills. Uh, everyone loves Patty, what he's been able to do in the San Antonio community. So one of the more popular things the Spurs have done in the past couple of years is they created the Coffee Gang. And during the pandemic, they would have these virtual Zoom conferences with Manu Ginobili, Boris Diaw, Tiago Splitter, a lot of the newer guys who were also involved. So Patty has been a huge influence in the local coffee scene. And over the summer, he kind of took this to a new level when he did the Give Mama coffee campaign on Mother's Day. Uh, he raised more than $100,000 for victims of domestic violence. And not only that, he also combined eight local coffee shops to help their business during the pandemic. So Patty did a great job organizing that. And I think that just speaks to where we are as a city and uh, you know how we've just kind of improved over the past decade or so when it comes to coffee shops. We have trucks now available as well. So we have really seen this boom over the past decade or so. Um, RJ, you guys have also are showing us how to make the perfect cup of coffee with Sarah Spivey's husband, Michael. Tell us about that. Yeah, Sarah's husband was great. He's part of this episode as well. And he gives us sort of a step-by-step -step guide how to make uh, coffee, you know, these kind of like elaborate designs, how to make that from home. So a lot of people want to try and do this at home. They don't necessarily have to go to coffee shops. I'm sure local, local coffee shops love to have them there. But if people are interested in doing this at home, Michael really kind of gave us an explainer as to how to do it, what sort of ingredients you need, and what sort of equipment you need. It's a pretty cool... Uh, uh, interesting look at uh, as Sarah says she invites us into her kitchen so it's pretty cool to see like the different methods and as we have all seen throughout the years this has really become kind of an art form so if people are trying something different they want to do this at home they want to maybe try some different methods you definitely want to check out this episode that is pretty cool and speaking of this episode how can people watch how can they tune in yes absolutely Stephanie uh, case that explains the San Antonio Coffee Culture is available to stream on demand on KSAT TV. Uh, you can find it on Roku, Fire Stick, most other smart TV devices. And uh, it will also be available on KSAT.com. So make sure you check it out there as well. Uh, RJ, it's nice to take a coffee break from COVID and focus on something else for a change. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Thank, thank you, you, RJ. Thank you. Uh, just about 941, 81 degrees. And you're watching GMSA at 9. We'll be right back. It is now 944 on your Thursday. And we've been waiting for the rain all week, and it is Thursday now, so soon, right, Justin? Yeah, you're putting the pressure on stuff. I can feel it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, the, the rain is hopefully going to be here this weekend. We're expecting at least some shower activity. Uh, of course, the big question is, where is this tropical depression, potentially tropical storm, uh, going to track? And so uh, that's what we're kind of trying to figure out this morning, get a little more clarity. And let's first uh, start with the Gulf of Mexico here, and you can see that we are getting some good thunderstorm activity over uh, a broad center of circulation here. It still looks a little bit ragged. 
Uh, this is going to be a, a slow developer, I think, as it moves off to the west, northwest. But there is potential that it could become a tropical storm. If it did, it would be Hannah. And uh, it is uh, still moving towards the Texas coast. Here's the latest track from the Hurricane Center. Uh, it does strengthen it to a tropical storm by tomorrow. And then eventually we could be looking at landfall uh, sometime on Saturday. But keep in mind, it could be anywhere within this, this cone here. So we're talking south of Corpus all the way to just south of Houston. There's still a large area that could have impacts from this tropical storm. But really, the story for us is the same as it's always been, and that's going to be rainfall. And, and we need the rain. We just don't want any flooding or anything like that. Uh, and so the question is going to be, where is the heaviest rain going to fall right now? It looks like that may be south of San Antonio. Still, we have some decent rain chances uh, over the weekend. And uh, it looks like we could get some decent tropical downpours. Uh, there are some uh, tropical storm watches in place. Houston down towards the Corpus area along the Texas coast there in anticipation for the arrival of this system. OK, let's uh, take a look at how many days now in a row we have seen. Uh, we have not seen rain 26 now officially at the San Antonio International Airport. So rainfall would be very nice to see. Here's one of our computer models. And uh, it does start to show, uh, throw some showers in our direction on Friday, but it's probably not until Saturday afternoon that we probably would see any real effects from this uh, with uh, more rain developing. And this will probably continue over into Sunday, all this, although this model puts a lot of the heaviest rain down there around the Corpus area. And the latest models projecting that, uh, yes, the heaviest rain will be down there, Catula to Beeville, and then it tapers off as you go north. We could see a pretty significant gradient uh, depending on where the storm moves. But right now, estimating two to three inches uh, here around San Antonio, numbers could be a little bit lower than that, again, depending on uh, where this moves. Uh, but we've got our fingers crossed here. Outside, this is the time lapse. We had some morning clouds, a little bit of vertical development on some of those clouds. We've had a few showers out there, 85 degrees right now. Dew point is at 71 and south southeast Julie winds at about six miles per hour. You see some of the clouds. The showers uh, are down there around Beeville this morning, and we could see a couple of uh, showers and storms develop today. There's certainly a chance there, but they'll be few and far between. 85 San Antonio, 84 New Braunfels, 82 right now in Seguin, 84 Carrizo Springs, 84 in Kennedy, and you can see some of those showers uh, that have developed there. Forecast high today up around 99 here in San Antonio, so still plenty hot. Heat index will be up there around 103, 104, maybe even 105 in some cases. And so by noontime, up around 90, 10% chance of rain this afternoon, 99, your high temperature. 99 again tomorrow with 20% chance, mainly along the coast. And then we'll go with a 60% chance Saturday afternoon into Sunday. There's still some chances next week, but the rain chances taper off a little bit. And yes, we did lower Sunday's temperature below 90 degrees, 89. That sounds fantastic. I know, I can't wait. Compared to today's, what, 99? 99, <laughs> feeling like 104, yeah. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Justin. Yep. We're now 948, 85 degrees. We'll take a look at today's 9 at 9 next. 951, more good news this morning in the race for a coronavirus vaccine. Plus, baseball is coming back today, and the Spurs are finally hitting the court. Here's today's 9 at 9. The United States signing a nearly $2 billion deal with Pfizer for large scale production and nationwide delivery of 100 million doses. We will ensure that um, of any vaccine that we're involved in sponsoring is either free to the American people or is affordable. There are about 70,000 people living in Star County and more than 1,600 people have tested positive for COVID-19. Emergency rooms are, are holding patients for hours or days because basically we do not have any rooms inside the hospital to put those patients. Republican senators and White House negotiators say they have reached a deal on key pieces of the new stimulus package. The $1 trillion plan includes $105 billion for helping get kids back to school and additional funding for coronavirus testing. President Trump announcing a plan to surge federal law enforcement officers to Chicago and other cities, describing those areas as rife with crime and violence. People are dying in Chicago and other cities, and we can solve the problem. 
A gambling operation shut down in a discovery of drugs and cash. Fifteen eight-liner machines were discovered. Investigators also found a stolen car, more than $4,000 in cash, and a half ounce of crystal meth, which could lead to federal charges. Tesla picking Texas. Now the electric car maker making Austin its home for its second Tesla auto assembly plant. The new plant will build Tesla's Cybertruck along with the Model Y small SUV. The company says it will employ at least 5,000 workers. Today's the day our Spurs will get their first true test of the restart of the 2019-2020 season. They face the best team in the NBA, the Milwaukee Bucks, this afternoon at 2 o'clock in the first of three scrimmages. Major League Baseball is set to begin the 2020 regular season. The season to be played without fans in the stands, just simulated crowd noise. For players, no high fives. For managers, no lineup card exchanges or arguing with ups. For all on and around the field, multiple COVID-19 tests per week. China has launched what it hopes will be its first successful mission to Mars. The probe is supposed to reach the red planet by February 2021 just days before the U.S. launches its own mission. If all goes to plan, the probe will orbit Mars and land a rover early next year. And today on the news at noon, it's Throwback Thursday. This time we're going back several decades to tell you the story behind the iconic skyride gondolas that used to take visitors to new heights in the Alamo City. And you'll find out how you can still enjoy the nostalgia-inducing attraction today. That's ahead on the News at Noon. Oh my gosh, I remember those from when I was a little kid. I do too. Let's uh, right now go outside with Transguide, and we want to let you know we've got uh, the cones out right now and traffic is stacking. This is 35 South at Cesar Chavez on the western edge of the downtown area. No problems northbound approaching 10, but uh, southbound lanes definitely stacking as folks are having to merge in that area. Justin. And we're already up to 85. It's very humid out there. We'll be close to 99 this afternoon. A couple of straight showers and storms, of course. Uh, we're watching very closely what goes on in the Gulf of Mexico. It does look like we'll get some healthy rain showers over the weekend. 60% chance both Saturday and Sunday. Thank you very much, Justin. We end with another story from KSAT.com. That's right. So a lot of people going through hard times right now. So a San Antonio restaurant here, it's called Chunky's Burgers. They are offering a free burger meal for those in need. Joey Prado, the owner of Chunky's at 4602 Callahan, is offering the meal to ease the burden that's caused. Uh, he said anyone in need can go request the free meal, which consists of a burger, fries, and a drink. He says they just can come and ask for it. My staff has done a great job of not making people feel embarrassed or ashamed, said Prado. Prado said uh, he tells KSAT he's hoping to offer the meal as long as he can. Hopefully, he said it won't be abused and we can keep it going until everyone is back at a good point in life. Amen. And so just in case you've heard this before, Chunky's Burgers has been featured on the Travel Channel show Man vs. Food. Yeah, that's right. I remember now because it was the Four Horsemen Challenge, which involved uh, eating a burger with the uh, all those fancy peppers, including Ooh. the dreaded ghost pepper. That's right. Very hot stuff, but cool thing on 4602 Callahan Road. Guys, have a good day.